Welcome to my channel, Corey's Cave. It is springtime in New England, and that means it is bug season. So that's why I had this hat on, keep some of the black flies away. Doesn't really do a lot, but it makes me feel better. It also means it's time to transplant some of my plants that are not ready to go in the ground because even though the forecast is gonna be in the 80s for the rest of the week, you just never know and we're likely to get a frost. So because of that, I've got these grow bags I've never used before. I was at my uh, local hydroponics store today, Ingrown Gardens in uh, Lebanon, New Hampshire. And I was talking about wanting something like 10, 20, but deeper, but maybe bigger, you know, cubes to put transplants in. And my buddy John showed me these grow bags. They seem like they'd be a great way to go. They're, there's 30 of them in this pack and they were like, three dollars and change for all these and today's prices that's pretty cheap so then i also got a couple bags of some happy frog soil that's what i'll be using and these are half gallon grow bags and i think i'll be actually using maybe half of a bag so a quarter gallon like i said these only need to survive for another two weeks maybe three before they get transplanted into the ground or whatever system I put them in, you never know. I've always got something up my sleeve I wanna do. So these are the bags. I said my first time using them. They've got holes in the bottom. And that's all there is to it. Pretty simple. I might even fill them more than halfway. But the other neat thing about them is that you can roll the edges like that to get a smaller bag if you want. So you don't have to use the whole thing. The only reason I wouldn't want to use a full half gallon necessarily is cost. Uh, good soil is not cheap. Nothing's cheap right now, but good soil is definitely not cheap. If I got it by the trailer load, it'd be a lot cheaper, but I don't like to spend a ton of money on on soil for plants that are probably going to go in the ground anyways. Because I don't know if they're all going to go in the ground, but we'll see. So I'm going to fill up a bunch of bags and I've got a whole bunch of plants I'm going to transplant into these and see how that goes. I'm just going to fill up a few of these bags and we'll get going. I've got the soil down here next to me, it's a little easier than being on top of the uh, bench here. You should fill it on top of the uh, bag so I don't lose a bunch of soil. I get that kind of full. I could probably put a little bit more in there, but like I said, I'm trying to uh, not use too much soil. I don't want to waste a bunch if I don't need to. They're not going to be in here that long. You can see that's what we have. Let me fill a bunch of these up, and then we will uh, get right to putting some plants in there and see how that goes. These seem to be working out really well. I got uh, 15 of the bags I filled up. I have to do, I'm probably going to use at least all of them, all 30, maybe more. And like I said, I'm going about a quarter gallon. They're half gallon bags, just rolled the edges, filled them to where I wanted to go. And so far, I think these are going to work out really well. I'm going to just start transplanting. I'm not going to show you everything I do because I get pretty boring, but show a couple. I have some tomatoes here. You can see there's actually two in there, but I'm gonna leave them. Uh, I, I got two different kinds of tomatoes here. I can't remember exactly what they are, but I know that one of them is a container tomato. So it, they're both determinate, so they won't grow vines and such. They will stay pretty compact. The container ones will especially stay small and compact. Uh, that's what I really like about them. I actually, I've never grown the container ones, but I have done other determinate ones. And I, I like they I don't have to put up all kinds of things to support them. They'll just stay nice and compact. Maybe one stick or so to uh, keep them to keep them from falling over. Yeah, it's pretty easy. Just making a little hole in the middle. The 
with a tomato, one of the great things about it is not only is it okay to bury some of the stem, but it's actually beneficial if you do. Anywhere that a tomato touches moisture, like anywhere on any stem, it will grow roots. And so that will help it seed in that much more. I actually, I think I planted two seeds in every one of these little peat pods. And I did that because I wasn't sure of the germination. These were like some of the cheapest seeds you could possibly buy. I think they were a dollar a package. It also meant you didn't get a lot of seeds, but I didn't need a lot. Uh, but I wasn't sure they were going to germinate very well. So I did two seeds per, per uh, pod. And almost every time I got two plants. So they actually germinated really well. Uh, better than I expected. Here I've got some Brussels sprouts. Uh, they were falling over as they were growing and they were really outgrowing their little pod area. As I said with tomatoes, it's perfectly fine to cover the stem as much as you want. It's actually beneficial. Some plants really don't like their stem to be covered up. And to be honest, I don't know uh, how Brussels sprouts feel about getting their stems covered up. So I'm not gonna cover them too much But it's nice where I've got the, the lip on the bag, the soil being a little bit below. As you can see, I got a little bit of support for the Brussels sprout, so it's not completely flopped over. Clearly waited way too long to transplant these. My, I wasn't intending to actually transplant. I was gonna go straight in the ground, but I think I'm gonna be better off actually transplanting them, give them another two weeks, maybe three before putting them out in the garden or wherever I decide to put them. Do some, uh, some flowers. So over here, I've got some morning glories and they've all kind of grown into this intertwined mess. And I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to separate them. Let's see if I can. Try to unwind them a little bit if I can without damaging them. Now it's kind of funny is when I planted the morning glories, I had no idea that they grew on a vine. Uh, I thought they were just a regular flower. I let my son pick out the flowers that he wanted from just looking at a store and saying, these are the ones I like, Dad, let's grow these. So I was like, yeah, we'll do that. I don't normally grow a lot of flowers, so I didn't know anything about them. Yeah. So when I saw these vines coming off, I was kind of surprised. And actually my mother walked over yesterday and was like, oh, those are morning glories. And I was like, oh, I didn't even know which, which ones those were I was growing. She, she knew as soon as she saw them. Probably not the best idea to try to unwind them, but I don't want to put all of them into one pot. I don't mind putting a couple of them in there. The camera. This is Parker. He helped plant these. Hi, Parker. Say hi to the camera. Hi. So we're going to get one of these guys in here. I will be putting some sort of stick in here just for them to be able to wind up on because they're not going to want to stand up on their own. Here's two that grew together, so we'll let them stay together. It actually seems like it might be helpful for the morning glories if you have two of them together because they, they just make a stronger base. And actually, with that being said, I'm going to put two. So if I don't have two grown in one pot, in one pod, I'll put two in a container. So I don't want to use a ton of containers on these flowers anyways. So these two will decide they like each other and 
support each other. Let's come back to this one. I'll add one to it onto this. So we'll just kind of introduce these guys. You're like, yeah, you like each other. You guys want to wrap right up. Over here. I've got some other flowers. I'm actually not even sure what they are. I can't remember. But these little plants here. So we'll, I think only three of them sprouted. So we'll do three of those. put this one in there for me. Mm -hmm. I'll put it down here so you can see it. There you go. Good job. Now just move the dirt around it. Oh yeah. It's okay. Black flies, huh? Good job. Want to do the next one too? Yeah, I'll get it for you. It almost looks like little trees, huh? Right. So that's a pretty good start. There's not a whole lot more to show you. I've got tons more, I've got more behind me, much bigger plants, I've got squash, I've got cucumbers, I've got watermelon, all need to be transplanted. But I just wanted to show you a little bit about these bags. I thought they were pretty cool. I've seen people mention grow bags and I know you can buy them pre-filled. Um, I didn't actually know that you could buy them like this. And so it's what's really neat about these is for one, even though they're plastic, it's very little bit of plastic. So None of these are a big, thick plastic. It's not as bad for the environment as like a big plastic pot. And because of the holes, the way that they're designed, there's holes in the bottom and the sides. And so you can do any sort of hydroponics you want with these, or you can just use them as a bigger pot to transplant into before you put into the ground. Um, so you could do, there's a lot of different methods you could do with these. You can do uh, flood and drain. They could be in a big table that floods and then drains out and these holes will let enough The, the idea that there's holes in the sides and not just the bottoms If they were sitting on a flood and drain table and just the bottoms had holes Not much water is going to get in there, but because there's holes around the sides it will wick in and you'll keep them nice and wet Some other systems you could do is you could do uh, like drip to waste so you could have a hydroponic system that you just have a tube in the top and it's just gonna every you know a couple times a day turns on the, the hydroponic solution runs the fluids and it just it drains to waste not drip to waste drain to waste and that's another method uh, you, you could pretty much do any hydroponic method with these another really neat thing about them is that you can actually fill them with anything i mentioned this earlier but if you were going to be doing a hydroponic setup, I probably wouldn't use the soil. Um, you could do straight perlite in these, like I've done in Dutch buckets. You could use cocoa core. Uh, you could use rocks if you wanted to. It's really up to you. So I thought they were neat. I thought they were worth showing you. If you like this video, if you enjoy content like this, uh, please give me a, a like and a subscribe. It helps me understand that you like what I'm making and sharing for you. So with that, I have a lot more planting to do, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks.